Hello, in this short video, I show you a possible round trip scenario um, where we use Nuke Studio and Baselight together in a workflow. And we use the BLG framework and Baselight for Nuke um, as a plugin to um, build a really efficient and modern renderless pipeline. So I start with an empty um, Nuke Studio project. I, I can do the conforming in Nuke and in Baselight uh, because both have, have a timeline well. Um, and for this workflow I start in Nuke Studio. So I bring in uh, Edit Decision List. This gives me an offline timeline here. I switch to the conforming workspace, double click that EDL, cut all the shots, match them against the media um, and I got my clips online here. Well, I don't focus on conforming um, uh, capabilities here. So um, now the first thing I'm doing is uh, create a comp per shot, which runs a script that produces a file structure with a new comp and a empty folder for the renderings. Uh, and I now want to do some grading because I see that the shots kind of need some grading um, here. I want to do that in Baselight. In Baselight I have the same project EENAP but obviously there is no scene yet and I don't want to, to do the conform twice. So what I could do is using um, the Python API in Nuke Studio and write a Python script, which again then communicates with the programming API of Baselight and creates automatically a scene using our autoconform functionality. And if I'm update here, I got a scene which has the same name as this one here. And I got the same timeline here in Baselight. So this is a pretty f simple example of a pr pretty efficient timeline. But I see that um, all the colors, well, are kind of wrong. And for this, I launched the color space journey, which shows a per shot flow through that um, color space stack. So I see that everything, the input, the grading color space and the viewing color space, etc. x79. And this is obviously wrong, because I know that the shots are in the state of RE linear white gamut in OpenEXR. Well, that looks more reasonable now. And I also want to go into the scene settings and I want to set my grading color space to Arveloxy White Gamut, which gives me a, a logarithmic, um, good shaped color space. And I want to use a True Light Film DRT, which is a display rendering transform, which is applied when we transform from a high dynamic range camera color space to a display color space. And on my display, I have Rec. 79 video because this is a Rec. 79 video monitor. So everything is set up correctly using true light color spaces. And now I can start with the creative grade. Maybe after a couple of hours, I'm back here and kind of happy. So what have we done here? So we went into a kind of a teal and orange kind of look here. This is not the, f the final um, grade. But this is just the first attempt. What do we see here? We have different layers here. And for example, in this layer here, we have a dynamic exposure. We can see that we have keyframes here and the exposure is animated, basically to compensate for the um, exposure change in the shot. Um, on that shot, um, we have several um, additional things to color grading. We have a facelift, which is kind of um, which kind of helps her skin tones to be more softer. And also we have uh, sharpening on on the eye and the, the mask for the sharpening is basically tracked here. So we have a planar tracker here as well. Um, yeah. And on, on his face, we have, for example, um, kind of a local contrast style of contrast enhancement. So this is as, um, advanced local 
color correction. Um, yeah, and we have uh, different um, different other gradings. So we have, for example, here a D key and a matte tool, which is our uh, polyhedron key here, here a three D key here. And to show what this does, this basically only corrects for that orange in that shot. Yeah, <coughs> and we want to communicate this look back to Nuke Studio, but without rendering the plates, because we have destroy destroyed the scene linearity by our grade here. Um, so what we can do is we launch our spreadsheet view and what we call shots view, export the BLGs. These are these uh, little um, per shot metadata files and export them. So we have 19 shots here. And if we go into the um, file system, we see what we are doing is creating um, one BLG file per shot. That's all f um, in Baselight at the moment. Um, and here in Nuke Studio, we can of course use um, the Python API again, and the Python API we provide for loading BLG files um, to write a custom script which finds the correct BLG files and apply them to the shots. So now I, I versioned up and if I go here I see exactly the same image as in Baselight. And if we go inside we see that we have the raw image here and it's just the, the script, the example script, just inserts a base light node, accesses that new knob via Python API, loads the right BLG, sets the input and output color space. It's basically the same procedure and algorithm as if you would load a lookup table, but it's much more than a lookup table because you can now launch the UI and see exactly what what you have done in baselight. So we have here, you see the keyframes um, for the dynamic exposure. Um, yeah, and you can modify it here if you want. Yeah, here we can see that everything is applied, not only a color correction. So if I launch up the UI here, we can see we have that facelift layer And we have the, the area tracker keyframe animated. We have that shape. We can readjust if we want. We have a keyframe animated transform. So we see it's a really gentle dolly. It's kind of, <coughs> there's grain layer, there are um, blurs, glows, and we kind of having a pretty good and we and we process the the frames as fast as we can get them from Nuke Studio. So with the general uh, speed improvements in Nuke Studio also the the plugin um gets way faster because our all of our algorithms run on the GPU. And in terms of a compositing environment the the base light plugin is kind of for free in terms of computational time it takes. So now, now we go. We are going to recall the the real grade of the show, which was the final grade, which has a completely different look. Uh, finally, they went into a completely different direction and have a kind of a filmic moody, really great brownish look here, which is kind of the opposite we have done in the first place for this demo. But that's not a problem because you just do the same thing. You export the BLGs version up
and you can do this simultaneously while you are doing the visual effects because it's decoupled it's just a shot a per shot asset so if we go to the file system we now see that we have we can also visually see that we have two grades for the for each shot the one teal and orange and the other the, the filmic one and if we go back to Nuke Studio, we are still on that look. And we're doing exactly the same. Run that script, which scans for the higher versions. And now we have the that filmic look here. And if we go in here, we can see that we have the base light effect. And, we, and still, we can pop up the UI. And have all of these different grading layers applied. and reprocess the frames as fast as we can get them. Yeah, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed it.